Okay, so I'm going to show you the PowerPoint after you've just done the different experiments. Um, the first one is the light spectrum. So you're going to want to explain to students that there's different wavelengths of light and this is what they look like. And we can only see this tiny little fraction of light right here. And all the rest is things like gamma rays and x-rays and UV that we can't see. Infrared is heat. Microwaves you've heard of. Radio waves are gigantic. They can run over buildings. And AM radio waves are even more gigantic. That's why you get AM in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so the higher, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy, the more damaging. But in the case of the plants, the more they like it. The next thing is this really cool experiment. This is an Engelman experiment. And what they did is they took light and they bent it using a prism and they shined it over top of a microscope slide. So only certain colors were reaching the microscope slide. And then they laid photosynthetic algae plants or algae cells along the slide. And then they laid aerobic bacteria, so bacteria that require oxygen. They laid those, they smeared them on the slide. And so bacteria can grow better if there's oxygen available. Aerobic bacteria will die without the oxygen. So the more oxygen that the, that the plant cells were producing, the algae cells were producing, the more oxygen's being produced, and so the more bacteria will grow. And so you can see this, this particular pattern that's been done, and it just so happens to match the, the um, spectrum for chlorophyll A. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool experiments. You can see that plants really like the blues and purples, and they really like the reds and oranges and yellows, they hate the green. And that's because what you're seeing is actually what they're reflecting, and not what they're absorbing, right? And so, we actually look at the spectrum, that's what it looks like. All right, and you can see the actual, the real spectrum. Here's chlorophyll A the, in the, uh, the darker, kind of greenish blue, okay? You can see chlorophyll B is just slightly shifted from that. And then look at carotenoids, these are orange pigments. And so you would predict if they're these oranges and reds that they are actually absorbing these colors and reflecting those colors, so kind of cool. Okay. Um, I want you to show them chlorophyll. I don't care that they know the structure necessarily, but they see this hydrocarbon um, tail is going to make them hydrophobic, and so they're actually that's how they're stuck into the thylakoids of the, the chloroplast is with that tail. Um, and then you can see some of the micronutrients they need, like like magnesium and nitrogen, to build chlorophyll. Um, okay, so. Something you want to point out is that chlorophyll has excitable electrons. So when light shines on chlorophyll, it has electrons that are able to jump shells and be out in outer shells. And so that's what's actually going to happen in photosynthesis. So we're changing that photon energy into actual potential energy by changing the location of the electrons. So when sunlight hits chlorophyll, it bounces these electrons out. Um, and so actually, if you took spinach leaves and you grind them up in the blender, and you, you isolate the chlorophyll, the, the green stuff, the slime, if you shine a UV light on it, it actually glows back red, like bright, brilliant blood red. And that's because it's absorbing those other colors and reflecting it back to you. It gives the light right back off. So it's like a fluorescent star that you have up on your ceiling, but it does it immediately. It, they fall back to ground state really quickly. Um, so that's what's going on in photosynthesis. Okay. Oh, and there it is. I forgot I had a picture of it. So there it is. All right, so let's go back to our experimental setup really fast. Let me just change the camera. Okay, so going back to our experimental setup, what are some of the other things that we can change besides the light color? So the light color is one thing we can change. But another thing we talked about changing was the amount of CO2 or the, the, uh, the inputs that they have. And so to change the amount of CO2, you're going to take the sodium bicarbonate, and I would suggest um, lab tech if you just put some sodium bicarbonate in a beaker with a spoon instead of digging into the master stuff, that would be better. Um, so that to add more sodium bicarbonate, they are actually going to have to add it directly to the plant. So they're going to uncap their tube, they're going to add sodium bicarbonate into it, swirl it around, and then cap their tube again and measure again. Now remember, they're not going to add it to this, they're going to have to get clear water because we want to only be testing one variable at a time. So you should be walking around to the tables and saying, huh, it looks like you're testing more than one variable here. How do you know which one is working? Keep reminding them of experimental protocol all the time. Ask them, what is your independent variable that you're testing here? What's your dependent variable that you're measuring? 
Okay, what's your hypothesis? What are you trying to test? Um, when you add sodium bicarbonate to the plant, if you add a little bit, it's actually going to increase photosynthesis rate maybe. Um, but that's really we're dealing with the Calvin cycle. But we're, we're, we're bringing reactants or eliminating products, so it should speed it up. But some of the students will find that adding sodium bicarbonate actually slowed it down, maybe even slowed it way down. And that'll be a discrepancy, so you guys can talk about it. Well, it turns out that sodium bicarbonate, when you add it to water, makes carbonic acid. And so if they overly add uh, baking soda to the water, they're actually putting the plant in acid. And the plant will actually slow down because of the pH. So you can talk about that. Um, other things you can manipulate, temperature. So if they want to grab a hot plate and warm the water up around the plant and see, but again, that's one of those sweet spot ones. If you warm it up a little bit, it might actually speed up photosynthesis. If you warm it up too much, too much it might kill the plant. Uh, the plants that get sort of destroyed for whatever reason, go ahead and throw those in the garbage. Uh, but if the plant sprigs look pretty good, they're not dyed weird colors or whatever, just have the students, if they added a bunch of extra base, so to have them rinse them off and then throw them back in the beaker. But do have them rinse them off, otherwise the pH is going to uh, go down in the beaker and we'll end up killing off all the allodium. So make sure they rinse them off. Um, yeah, and they can be creative, but they can think of something else. I have had students in the past that have made like a tinfoil shield around the back so it's reflecting even more light so they get more light um, and that can speed up photosynthesis. Um, yeah, you, you can be creative, tell them to be creative, but they're going to test as many as they can and then when everybody's done testing it, you're going to have this discussion, go through the PowerPoint. Um, and then, let me pull this up. All right, so we're going to look back at the board. This is so crooked. All right, zoom in a little bit. All right, so once they've got this, you can start getting them towards an equation for photosynthesis. Okay, and so what goes in? What's going into photosynthesis? Well, we've got CO2. Right, we've got water, and we've got sunlight, and what's coming out? Sugar, which is glucose, C6H2O6, and oxygen. So then the big question becomes, what's the mass of a tree? What is the tree made of? What is that mass? And it's this molecule right here. But where is the mass? Is it in the hydrogen and oxygen? Is it in the carbon? And they're going to say, yeah, well, it's probably in the oxygen. You're right. Um, it's also in the carbon. So the question becomes, is the mass of a tree this or this? Notice soil is nowhere in that equation. Okay, and we'll learn more in class about where the mass of the tree is actually coming from. Coming from. But it turns out to be this, right? CO2. Um, but notice, yeah, point it out to them. Soil is not in the equation at all. They're not building their mass from the soil. Okay. Now, after you watch this, I want you to actually watch the photosynthesis video that I'm going to post with this. So, just so you're, you're not going to draw this, but I want you to be an expert in photosynthesis when you do this lab so that you know how to help students. So I'm going to go ahead and send that out and have you watch that. Um, I draw the whole process. But again, you're not going to draw the process. That'll be done in lecture. Okay, so... Next thing we're going to do is the homework.